Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This video, Residuals, is the ninth in a playlist on regression. All of these are available on my channel, Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. As I record this, there are 40 videos in this channel. I will continue to produce new ones on the concepts covered in the book. See my website, statisticsfromatoz.com slash videos, for the latest status of my videos. As usual, in the book and in these videos, we'll go quickly through a list of keys to understanding, or KTUs, to give you the overall picture on one page. And then, we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. For this video, there are four KTUs. The first key begins by saying that residuals are an important part of regression analysis. The value of the residual of any XY data point is the value of the Y predicted by the regression model, which is denoted by Y with a hat, minus the actual value of Y, which is observed in the data point. So the residual is the predicted value of Y minus the actual value of Y. That is Y hat minus Y. The second KTU says residuals represent the error in the regression model that is, variation of the outcome variable y, which is unexplained by the regression model. Residuals must be analyzed to ensure that this variation is truly unexplainable by any other factors, x variables, which are not included in the regression model. The third key says, standardize the residuals before analyzing them. The fourth and final key to understanding says residuals must be random and be normally distributed. They must not be correlated with any x variable. They must not be autocorrelated relative to time sequence. They must have constant variance and must have no unexplained outliers. And here on one page are the four keys to understanding the concept of residuals. You may wish to pause the video at this point in order to read them all together. Okay, let's go back to the top and take a closer look at KTU number one. It starts out by saying, residuals are an important part of regression analysis. The value of the residual of any XY data point is the value of the Y predicted by the regression model, which is denoted by y with a hat, minus the actual value of y, which is observed in the data point. Now, virtually no regression model is a perfect fit for real-world data. For any given value of x, or for multiple x's, the predicted value, also known as the expected value of y, which is calculated by the model, will usually not be identical to the actual value of y for that x in the data. This difference is an error in the model. Almost all models have some error. The difference is called the residual. Residue, according to dictionary.com, means something that remains after a part is removed, disposed of, or used. Remainder, rest, remnant. After we remove the variation in y, which is explained by the regression model, what's left, the residue, is called a residual. The remaining variation is, for each xy data point, the distance from that point to the regression line, as measured along the y-axis. This is shown in the diagram. The black dots are the xy data points. The dashed line is calculated by the regression analysis. The vertical dotted lines from each data point intersect the regression line at a point whose y-value is y-hat. The differences between each data point and its counterpart on the line are the residuals. The value of each residual is the length 
of its dotted line. Obviously, we'd like the residuals to be as small as possible, as we'll explain in KTU number 2, but there are additional considerations, as explained in KTUs 2, 3, and 4. KTU number 2 says, Residuals represent the error in the regression model, that is, the variation of the outcome variable y, which is not explained by the model. The length of each dotted line is the variation in y for that data point from the model. Obviously, we'd like the residuals to be as small as possible, but there's more to it than that. KTU number 2 goes on to say that the residuals must be analyzed to ensure that this variation is truly unexplainable by any other factors, that is, x variables as factors, which are not included in the, in the regression model. KTU number four will give us six specific things to analyze, but first, KTU number three says, standardize the residuals before analyzing them. Residuals are in the real-world units of the Y values in the data, for example, kilograms, dollars, seconds, and so on. Residual analysis, also known as residual diagnostics, will be easier to understand if we convert them to standard residuals. For any individual residual, the standardized residual equals the residual divided by the standard deviation of all the residuals. So, standardized residuals are in units of standard deviations. As we'll soon see, this will help us make better use of the normal distribution in our analysis. KTU number four specifies six requirements for residuals. These are to ensure, as best we can, that there are no other important X factors which we need to include in our regression model. If the regression model has accounted for all sources of variation, the x's, then any remaining variation in the value of the y variable, the residuals, must be just random noise. The overall requirement is that residuals must be random. Several of the other requirements are just different ways to ensure randomness. The first thing to do is a scatter plot of the residuals. The plot should show no pattern. A pattern uh, forming a curve may indicate that nonlinear regression is needed. If there is a pattern approximating a standard slanted line, then there may be an additional x variable that needs to be added to the model. Some other patterns are shown on some of the slides that follow. If the noise is truly random, it would be normally distributed. This can be illustrated with a histogram of the residual values and it can be statistically verified with a test for normality, such as the Anderson-Darling test. Residuals must not be correlated with any x variable. Check this for individual x's with a scatter plot of the residuals against each of the x variables. There should be no pattern, or the pattern should approximate a horizontal band, which indicates that the residuals do not vary as, y, as x varies. Also, we must evaluate the correlation coefficient, the R's. The concept of correlation coefficient is explained in the second video. Residuals must not be correlated with each other. That's called autocorrelation. This can be seen in a time sequence plot with the time period as the horizontal axis and the value of the residual on the vertical axis. There should be no pattern. Here's an example of what we should not be seeing. Residuals must have constant variance. The, respread, the spread of the residuals should not increase or, de or decrease over time or in concert with an increase in an X variable. We should not see a megaphone shape on a scatter plot. Finally, outliers are a potential cause for concern and should be investigated. Definitions vary regarding what exactly is an outlier. Any point beyond about 2.5 standard deviations from the mean has about a 1% chance of occurring in a standard normal distribution. 
which is the distribution of standardized residuals should follow if they are NF. So that is a reasonable definition for these purposes. A control chart or a box and whiskers plot can be used to identify outliers. With the latter, an outlier will be outside a whisker. With small sample sizes, outliers can have a disproportionate effect on the calculations. In addition, outliers are considered to be outside the distribution and due to special causes which are outside of the process or population which generated the data. So outliers need to be investigated to see if there is an additional X factor causing them. Okay, that concludes our clarification of the concept of residuals. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me that more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromazz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromazz.com slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you are confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at stats A to Z.